Hello friends, good listening. It was 1976 and I founded an agency with my brother with the money we had saved over the years. We were going to investigate the events and publish them in our newspaper. It would be very absurd to establish a political newspaper in these periods. They would immediately arrest us and put us in prison. In fact, there were almost no political newspapers at that time. Instead of establishing a political newspaper, we were going to investigate terrible and mysterious events and publish them in our newspaper. Our first job was about cases in a village. It was thought to be the evil eye. Because all kinds of troubles were happening to all the women in the village. There was no peace left in any family. My brother Mehmet took a lot of documents and packed his suitcase and went to the village. He would stay there for about a month and come back with the information he had gathered. During that time, he corresponded with me and said that everything was going very smoothly and that there was nothing mysterious about it. At that time, the agency was settled with a lot of debt. I did everything to pay for these. I gave everything I had. During that period, we could not contact my brother at all. After paying off half of the debts, I asked him by letter when he would come. Because the financial situation was poor and he had to come now. I received a reply only four days after the letter and I was shocked. My brother stated that he would not come to me and that he would always stay there from now on. I could not go to that village because my financial situation did not al allow it. Because the village was far away. My friends didn't want to go either. Because there were many rumors about that village. He said that cases of demons took place there. And that's why no one wanted to go. My best friend couldn't go either. Because he was also working at my agency. He had many financial affairs and, like me, accumulated debts. Finally I notified the police. And they were going to go to the village and bring my brother. But when they came they told me they couldn't find him. Not many people saw him in the village. Only a few people saw it and they didn't know where it went. While I was grieving for my brother, the debts doubled. I paid off all my debts in exactly 10 years. I had paid off my debts, but I had no money. And I had to find money and go to that village? Actually, I could have borrowed money and left. But I couldn't leave the agency. That's why I decided to sell the agency and leave. Another 10 years passed and someone bought the agency. Now the financial situation had improved and I could go to the village. But first I had to consult my best friend Selman. I called Selman on Saturday morning and told him that I would consult him about something. We met in a cafe and I expressed my gratitude to him. He already knew these issues. Selman made me an interesting offer. He said, I don't know, but I think you should go to Astikara. I said, okay, if something bad happens, I will go no matter if something bad or good happens. Salman said, you just do it and we'll see, depending on the situation. I went to Astikora but I couldn't see anything in my dream. Later, when I told Salman, he said that he would perform Astikora for me. After he went to bed, he told me what he saw. He saw bad things in his dreams. That's why he said I shouldn't go there but I had in mind to go there. Besides, the police went there and nothing happened. What would happen if I left? I packed my suitcase and set off on the first bus. The village I was going to was for Divan village. There were no buses directly to the village. I went to Kastamonu Yeni Keg district. They took me down there. There was a coffee house in the district. I went there and asked the backgammon players. Assalamu alaikum. I asked how I could go to four divan villages from here. Alaikum salam brother. No, why do you want to go there? Someone said. My brother stays there. I said I have to go there. What is your brother's name? I said loyal. I don't know him at all. I have one car. Let me finish this game and we can go together. Otherwise, there is no car to go to that village. There are demons there. He said no one goes out of fear. I was able to say okay. The man bought me tea. 
While I was drinking my tea, he was finishing the game. We got up a few minutes later. The man had a beat up car. He sat forward. The man was able to start the car after two tries. We started to move. We were uncomfortable because there were stony roads. At that time, the man started chatting. So your brother is there, huh? So where will you stay there? I don't know. Maybe I can find a place to stay. I have an acquaintance. You can stay there. But let me tell you from the beginning, strange things are happening in that village. Do you think it's the evil eye? Or are the demons trying? It is unknown in that village. Take care of yourself. I don't think there is such a thing. But I still pay attention. Maybe there is. A friend of mine performed a sticker for me. He had a bad dream. He told me not to go. But I decided to go anyway. I wish we hadn't gone, even now we can go back. He said, if you have money with you, you should buy gas. We are about to run out of gas. While chatting, we came to a path. There was a big hole ahead as we passed. Why and how was this excavated? There were no flat areas to cross. I slowly descended into the pit. After going a little further, I climbed out of the hole. There were houses ahead. But there was no sign of the sign. I entered, entered the village walking with my suitcase. There were no men outside. I heard someone shouting. It was coming from a house. The window was open. The woman was beaten by her husband. As they say, husbands and wives were on very bad terms here. The man left me a paper. He said, you can go to this man and stay there. It was in the village square. I went down to the square and something caught my attention. There was no mosque. And there was a church. The church was a very old church. It was very hot and that's why. I was going to drink water from the fountain in the square. I turned on the fountain. There was no water coming. Then it started to flow a little but. The color was like black. Then it turned into a reddish color. It was disgusting. It smelled like iron. I turned off the fountain. There was a coffee shop ahead. Someone was sitting there. He must have been reading a newspaper. I went to him. To ask for the address of the house of the man on the paper. I said hello to the man. I saw the house of the man on that paper. I said I was going to ask. The man didn't even look at me. He continued reading. I nudged the man and asked again. The man threw his newspaper on the ground. He looked at me. He said, I don't know. And he entered the coffee house. I'm very confused. He was a different person. I went and found the house. I knocked on the door of the house. A woman opened the door. His face was bloody and bruised everywhere. He asked me what's wrong. So I showed him the paper and explained the incident. He showed me the house. The house was the house behind the fountain. The door when closing husband. He came and I hit him hard. The woman fell to the ground. He dragged her and threw her out. So I got angry and hit the man. The man collapsed to the ground. One in the house silhouette there was. He was wearing a black chatter. It could be said that his face was not visible. But he could see his eyes. It was a yellow color. He was looking at me angrily. I felt a little different. At that moment the man stood up and punched me. I fell to the ground. In the linen there. I looked again but it wasn't there. I got up and walked away. Without even knowing why I walked away. I went. I went to the house behind the fountain and knocked on the door. I hope the man welcomes me to his home. I thought it would. I knocked on the door. After waiting for a long time. A man opened the door. 
Just a tank top and nothing underneath. There were shorts. Soft to me. In one mouth. Hello. Who did you look at, brother? He said and looked at the ground. He took his shirt and put it on. He said sorry while wearing it. So I immediately showed the paper and... I asked, is it you? When he approved, all the events. I told him if I could stay at his house. I asked. He let me in. With one child and his wife. Was staying. We started chatting. And I asked what I was wondering about. Why is everyone afraid of this village? I said. I don't know, I swear. They're making things up. Chinese. They say there is something like that here, he said. And everyone is fighting here. They say it does. Really? Everyone here is fighting does said. There is no family life here. Everyone fights. But. We would never do that, would we? Said the lady. Yes sir, said his wife. His wife gets up and brews tea for us. He went to the kitchen for. We are television. We watched. After a while. I mentioned my brother and they. They said they didn't see it either. I even had his photo with me. I showed it but they couldn't recognize it. It was already a black and white photo. Return the photo to my bag while putting. Boy give me your photo. Told. He took the photo and. He went to a room. With the man. He seemed a little angry. I couldn't understand what was happening and that's why. I asked the man what happened. Man. He said he didn't know. While sitting. The boy left the room and came to us. Came. He gave me the photo and. I know this. In the village. I saw it somewhere, he said. Me too. I am sh shot. Where is it now? He asked what he saw. Room. On a field road with someone. He said he saw him walking around. When I asked who he was, he paused for a moment. He looked at his father and said, I don't know. He passed by and went to his room. Entry. This family is fine. I thought it was. But this. There are different people in the family like those in the village. Output. I didn't know what to do. Maybe a trace of my brother. I couldn't find it. In the evening. They showed me where to sleep. And so I went to that room. The room was very stuffy. The bed was old. Windows. I opened. I watched outside. I also turned off the light in the room. So that they would think I was sleeping. I wonder why there was no mosque in this village. After all, everywhere in this country. It must be a mosque. Already here. The church that stood there looked very old. I guess no one is religious in this village. He wasn't taking care of it. Windows. I turned it off and went to drink water. I went to the kitchen. When I go to the kitchen, the refrigerator turns on and off. I saw. Probably in the kitchen. One window was open. Of the wind. It opened and closed with its back. I. I walked into the kitchen and the refrigerator slammed hard. Closed. The windows were also closed. I turned on the fountain. Again. The water was flowing disgustingly. Immediately. I closed it. Where does the water come from in this house? I wonder if they drink. From the kitchen. Man coming out of bedroom. He came out and came towards me. He had an angry face. What are you doing there? This. I was going to drink but black from the fountain. Things were flowing. I didn't drink either. 
I said. Clean water in the refrigerator. There is. He said you can drink from there. Why does this guy react so much? I couldn't understand what he was showing. I. I opened the refrigerator. Clean in the jug. There was water. Filling the glass with water. I drank. I drank. Then I went to my room. I slept. It wasn't morning yet. More? Even the sun had not risen. I suddenly woke up with a very bad nightmare. I was sweating profusely. I wiped it with the towel lying on my bed and... I tried to regain my composure a little. In my dream, the door of this room. It was opening and inside was a sheet. Was entering. Supposedly he's in that genie. He came towards me and... He said something. What? Of course I didn't understand what you said. He was speaking something in Arabic. I knew a little Arabic but... I couldn't understand what he said. I get over the nightmare and open my eyes again. I closed it and it was there again in my eyes. The thing came to life. I'm blinded by fear. I can't turn it off. I wouldn't be able to sleep. Probably tonight. Get up. I went to the toilet, but there was no toilet at home. I guess it was old school. I went out and right at home. I saw the toilet ahead. Shuck. It was something like that. My job. Entering the house after taking care of. Constantly turning on the lights of a house. I noticed it was closed. Is he crazy or what? I said these. Later house. I went in and tried to sleep again and. I managed to sleep. Morning. I woke up early and put my hands on my face. I went into the bathroom to wash. To bath. I went in and washed my hands and face. There were some sounds coming from the house. Speech sounds in a different language. Was coming. He had a deep voice. I went towards the direction where the voice came from. I wonder what was this sound. Towards where the sound comes from. I approached. The sound was getting louder. The sound was coming from the bedroom. I didn't go in but secretly. I listened. This voice man. Belonged. But why was he talking like that? That? The man suddenly stopped talking. There was a mosaic glass on the door. And I could see the man, though not clearly. He was speaking to the right. After you shut up. He suddenly looked in my direction. I was startled and immediately. I walked away from there and went to my room. Why are you interfering in everyone's business? B, B. Oh my stupid head. I hope the man doesn't throw me out of his house or anything. I thought. Everyone. When we woke up, we had breakfast together. The man never mentioned it. So he wasn't angry with me. Sitting after breakfast. We sat in his room for a while. At that time. Something caught my attention. Your man. His son was reading a book. Him. I was looking. What are you reading? Is that Arabic? No. So what? He said in Hebrew. Hebrew? First time. I hear. So why do this? Are you reading? You will understand in time. I wasn't surprised by the situation. I wasn't. Why a person? Who learns Hebrew? And over time. He would also understand. Very interesting. Actually. After sitting in home for a while. Then go out with the man. We went out. Houses one by one. We were going to travel. Because the village is big. And I want to get my work done as soon as possible. 
because I want us to look at all the houses. He could find the night. Already. It was cold in the afternoon when we left. It was in the village square. I asked him why there is no mosque here. I asked. In response to the answer I received, I was actually shocked. Ours. Our belief is different. How? Your whole village? Almost. Just that house on the mountain? The man there is Muslim. Said. Which religion do you believe in? Christian, Jew. Etc. No. We don't just believe in God. Then you are an atheist. If you want to ask too many questions. Said. A house together. We knocked on his door and took photos. I showed the man my brother. But he said he didn't know him. Even though we look at most houses. We learned that no one was aware of it. The man told me one last time. He said we had to go somewhere. It was one o'clock in the morning. It was very quiet around. The only sound is our steps. Was taking it off. There is nothing around. There was no light either. In pitch dark. Seeing very little ahead of us. We were walking. The man tells me right there. He said and pointed. I looked at the ground. The place it shows is night. It was put in a very bad place. As we moved towards it step by step, I had a bad feeling. I see a nightmare before my eyes. It came with sheets. My hands. He was sweating with fear. It sweats. He would sweat cold. We came home. And the man is exceedingly exceeded. He knocked on the door. I looked around. And coffins everywhere. I saw that it happened. In the trees. Something was hanging. Bags and sacks leaning against the walls of the house. Stood in a way end. A disgusting smell was coming from there. Even just a little bit from the window of the house. The inside could be seen. One. I saw a shadow and after that. Door opened. The door. A woman, 1.50 tall, opened it. The woman was wearing a chatter. Just as. Like I saw in my dream. Woman. As soon as I opened the door he looked at me and. His eyes suddenly widened. Such a. My heart grew faster. It was crashing. Woman then on my neck. He looked and suddenly couldn't breathe. Started. Woman almost. He was going to die. Harden yourself by coughing. He gathered himself together and whispered to the man. He entered the house again. He. At that moment I felt a terrible burning sensation on my neck. When I look at my neck, my protection spell. I saw that it happened. Suddenly rope. It broke and my spell fell to the ground. As I was taking it, my spell was released in the inside. There was also a paper with a prayer written on it. While I'm about to take it man. He bent down and took the paper. A little. He examined it and said he would give it to me later. The woman came again after a while and. He opened the door. Man to him. He showed me the paper with the prayer written on it. The woman's eyes widened again. And go out immediately. He threw it into the slightly burning fire. I couldn't believe my eyes. How can they burn prayer? I was very angry. I shouted at the woman. Woman. SHHHH don't scream. You will be in danger. The woman's eyes are blue. I noticed. To the woman's eyes. I felt dizzy when I looked at it. I suddenly fainted. When I opened my eyes. I found myself in a different room. I was alone in the room. The room was very cramped and. 
His soul was shrinking. I suppose. I was at the old woman's house. Getting out of bed in bed. I felt something hard. Of the bed. I put my hand under it and. Something slippery had arrived. I pulled into me and saw that he had flesh. I saw. It was disgusting. I immediately threw it on the ground. Your stomach. It was blurry. I went out of the house and. I started vomiting. Where was I I? After entering the house again. Then in a room. The old woman and the man whose house I was staying at. I saw you talking. I listened a little. But they did not speak Turkish. Something in Arabic style. They were talking. The woman looked at me. And at that moment I immediately went into the room. I went. The woman got up and left the table. He gave me a drink. He said, take it, it will come to you. Man. He wanted to say, take it, it will be good for you. He didn't know much Turkish. I said, how does he know? Hebrew. He said he knows. From where? Do you always speak Hebrew here? I said your son was learning too. Five more minutes here if I say. He said you can't stop. Say it. Whether I can stop or not, let me decide. I said. At that moment the woman spoke. Jumped. We believe in the devil. Said. My nightmare. Things I've seen and experienced. It was on my mind. I'm all this. You know, despite the extraordinary thing, Turkish. I said you didn't know. I understand. He said, I can't talk. I. I really couldn't stay here anymore. Do you believe in the devil now? I said I'm getting up. Man, at least you're going to get up. He said let me tell you one last thing. What did I say? Be careful. You can't leave this village anymore. The demons in this village are from your village. They won't let you out. Jinns are everywhere. In this house. There is even I even have it at my house. 